coming on. I am here tonight with Chris Strickland. We're going to add Chris to our conversation tonight. Is it working? Oh my gosh, we did it. It worked. It worked. Hell yes. How are you doing over there? I'm good. Good. Had a crazy 24 hours of yesterday. Yes. I saw Amanda Palmer at the concert and met her. Crazy. Oh, well, you were loving that. So tonight, we're going to do your 15 minute reading. You asked me some specific questions. So I'm going to be pulling up your chart here. Well, Chris, I am looking at your chart right now. And one of the questions you asked me is, why am I so black and white? Yeah, like what in my chart gives me the black and white factor? People usually love me or they hate me. Well, you know, yeah. Well, I'm looking at your chart right now and it's just so dynamic. There's so many really interesting pieces to your personality. And I think it's almost like you could be, you know, a mystery. Um, number one, I'm looking at the fact that you have you were born with Neptune and Capricorn in your first house in Capricorn. So I'm sure you've heard on your ascendant. That's really how people see you. So they kind of see yeah. you as this, you've got rules, you know, you're really specific. You're like, you know, you're just badass. You just put it down, you know. You don't hide what you want to say, you know, you're just like, you know, it's kind of like this whole thing that they see in you first. And with Neptune there, it can put a mirage, so to speak, over your outer personality where so many people are seeing you differently. Yes. It, it pissed me off so bad. It's like, y'all don't even fucking know me. Is that Neptune, I guess? It really is Neptune. Neptune puts an image, you know, over us. And it's like, like people are looking into a crystal ball. It's like, what is he? And there's different parts of you. When we look deeper into your chart, that we see different things about you. I'm looking at the fact that you have Mars and Aries. I have a yacht pointing at it. Yeah. And, and exactly. So, so this Capricorn Ascendant is really about everyone. You're trying to build. You're trying to build community. You're, you're at the base of everything, which is why you and I have been friends a long time in the astrology community, because you have really been at the foundation of the beginning of this community. And we sure can go to you to find out, you know, all the different changes and things that have happened, because you are really a builder. And you've laid a foundation. Now, the only other thing here is, though, with Mars and Aries, that being a square, you're kind of on your own. You're kind of in for your, your own self. you got your own thing going. So people are looking yeah. at you like, wait, are you community? Are we building this together? And you struggle with that, too. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I always look to see where the sun and moon are. And you have the sun in Leo and the moon in Scorpio, which is a really intense square. So you've got the lion, the focus of a lion. He's a predator and he knows what he wants. He's got to eat and then he's got to get back on top. So there's a part of you that knows at the end of the day, you got to feel good about it. If you don't feel good about it, it ain't happening. A lot of times I don't. And that's going to be an inner struggle. Although there's sometimes that, we're involved in situations that we need to be at for a time, for a cycle. We don't always love everything we're doing, but sometimes we can do the things that are getting us closer and closer to the ultimate thing we love. And you are a great yeah. visionary. The problem here is, is you see into the future. You've already seen it. You can picture it. You've tasted it. You felt it. And now it's like so annoying that you have to wait and be patient for it to actually come to pass. It's like, when is this going to happen? I've already seen it. And you had your first Saturn uh, in Sagittarius. And that's the vision. 2016 and 2017 and some of 2018. Mm -hmm. That period humbled me greatly. Before my Saturn return, it's like, fuck you. Like, I don't give a fuck. And now it's like, well, you know, there's two sides to every story. And like, yeah, you have been so, a lot yeah. more empathetic. <laughs> That's a yeah. good thing. 
So the other thing you asked me is why are you so attracted to Sagittarius, especially musicians? Do I need to name these musicians? Well, you can name them. Yeah, tell me. Let's let's name. Them. Okay, so my my two biggest obsessions right well right now, I love Billie Eilish. I don't care how fucking cliche that sounds. I know she's everywhere. I fucking love her, and she's awesome. And everybody knows I'm obsessed with Britney Spears. Right? Isn't she a Sag rising? No, she's, oh, a, she's Sag. a Sagittarius. Uh, Aquarius moon. Billie Eilish is a sad Aquarius moon. Mm -hmm. I love Nicki Minaj. Sagittarius Aquarius rising. Very Imogen Heap. Sagittarius. Uh, Amy Lee of Evanescence. I've always loved them. She encouraged me to learn piano when I was little. And she's a Sagittarius Cancer moon. So all these Sagittarius influence me greatly. I don't understand why. Okay. Well, the first thing that stood out to me is the fact that you were actually born in a very rare configuration at a very tight junction with Saturn and Uranus in Sagittarius. You've got a, you've got a really powerful punch here, too, back in, in the generation that you were born in, in 1988. Okay, now let's look at music here a minute. Uranus is actually the highest vibration of music. People no. that are strong with strong Uranian planets in their chart, they have the ability to hear music without knowing how to read it. I didn't That's know that. it. And also, I'm looking at this, which is so interesting, is that your second house, which is ruled by Taurus, which is ruled by music, is in Aquarius. You were born with a certain high pitch vibration already imprinted in you from Uranus and Sagittarius. And so when you hear other Sagittarius singing, it's like they're speaking your language. Their vibration speaks your language. You feel it. You are picking up on their vibration, plus their words and the way they is so Sagittarian and it has this Aquarian yeah. thing going on, which you connect to see, and, but you have Sag in your 12th house, which you, you get the dark humor of Sagittarius. So just look at this okay. Saturn Uranus, you know, you, you have imprinted in you the uh, octave of the Sagittarius. Every sign has a certain octave. That's like when we look at Pisces, we see people like Johnny Cash has a moon in Pisces, that real deep, almost like, what do you call that? Like, um, you know, what's the uh, deepest voice, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. There's soprano. It's like when you play the drums, you know? <laughs> I want to say tenor. Is it tenor? I'm not good. I should be better. No, that's like the middle. You know, like I'm saying, like that Johnny Cash voice. And even Elvis Presley had a moon in Pisces. There's a certain haunting, deep voice because it's at this octave of the 12th sign. So every sign carries a certain melody. Also being that you have a sun and Mars and Leo and Aries, and it's another attraction to your other fire sign. So it's like... A I want to get away. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and see, you can sing yeah. with that tone because of your 12th house. That's so cool. A lot of your music's like that. If you guys have not heard Chris's music, it's amazing. And he, you're able to go with all these different tones and things. It's pretty cool. That's always been what everybody says to me. It's like, you can go so deep and then like... Uh, uh, yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, right there. That is your Sag in the 12th house octave. Okay, my next question was, what contributes to my major depression disorder when you look at my chart? Okay. Because I've always dealt with that. I've always had to be ben medicated mm -hmm. for it. We often see that rooted in the water signs. So right off the right. bat, 
I'm looking at you and I see that you've got the moon in Scorpio and Venus in Cancer and the North Node in Pisces. You also have Pluto in Scorpio. Okay, so moon Pluto conjunction. Pluto, let's talk about Pluto now. Pluto goes into different cycles and sometimes you can't see Pluto at all. He dives down really, really deep behind Neptune and it's like he's in this hidden dark place and then all of a sudden as the season changes and he comes around again he rises like the phoenix when you are a person that you know you've got moon Pluto Scorpio you cycle in seasons of where Pluto is it kind of takes you down so yeah. looking at looking at the water in your chart cancer also is ruled by the moon and the moon is every two and a half days, it's shifting. So, so you're riding this wave all the time, more so than any other sign. You are the most susceptible and connected to the moon shifts. So that's why you kind of have this moody, potentially, behavior. You might want to journal and follow the moon every two and a half days and see what where your moods go oh, the other question you asked me is why do people kind of not get me or, or know who i am you have jupiter and gemini and and that gives you jekyll and hyde and and not a bad thing but it's reality that you have different personalities that's, that's so when you're pissed off, pissed off you can go super awesome super helpful to what the fuck you know but thank god for our gemini's right we wouldn't uh we would never, you know, we wouldn't be told the truth.